The Doe Triple D or Doe Dual Drive is a makeup charter produced by Ernest Doe and Sons in the 1950s and 1960s in Ulting, Essex. It's two engines and its 90 degree articulated articulation made it one of the most unorthodox tractors that was ever built. Good morning everybody, you're very welcome back to the channel. Uh, just a quick shout out to everybody that commented on last week's video again, another popular video on um, Ireland's farm machinery manufacturers. Um, so yeah, this week's video is all about dough. Um, now it's a short video um, because I have a very busy, busy couple of weeks coming up. Um, I have a short video this evening um, or this morning um, talking about dough. Uh, we're going to look at the tractor itself, short history on the tractor and a short history on the company that manufactured it. Um, now I am away in the UK all next week. Um, so I am going to do my very best to have another short video out next Sunday as well. Um, so instead of having one long video uh, today, I'm going to try and do two short videos just to be able to squeeze everything in and keep the ball rolling as the yeah, as the case may be. Um, it's great to see that the weather is up at last. It seems that there's a high coming in. Uh, we're going to have a break in the weather for at least a couple of weeks, please God, because it is badly needed at this stage. Things are, have gotten really, really bad for most farmers, whether you're a tillage farmer, whether you're dairy, whether you're beef, there's cattle still in sheds, land is sodden, it's wet, it's, you can't put cattle out, slurry tanks are full, there's potatoes still on the ground, there's potatoes going to the ground. It's a really, really, really bad situation um, at the minute, but it's looking like the weather's going to turn. Look, it's not going to make everything right, but it is going to help and it's badly needed. Um, so shout out to all the farmers that are going to be very, very busy over the next couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be a lot of, lot of hours put in. Uh, trying to somewhat catch up um, so yeah next week I'm heading to the UK now I mentioned before in videos I love the UK countryside I love the UK agricultural scene I've been around a lot of farms in the UK it's been a couple of years since I've been over um, but especially their tillage farms and stuff like that I've been around a lot of them things are a different scale obviously to what they are over here in Ireland um, so I'm heading to a place called uh, Long Melford which is just south of Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk um, a place that I do know quite well my sister lived there for in Ipswich for a couple of years which would be in the general area and I have traveled that area quite a bit um, but I will be there for four days and I am looking for things to do so if there's anybody watching who's maybe from that area um, who has you know an idea of something like place of interest that I can go and visit. Now the two things I'm in I'm into are obviously agriculture and aviation. So if there's any museums around, be it agricultural or aviation type, maybe RAF museums or something. Um, if anybody has any ideas, uh, something that I could do, places of interest, um, things to see, or indeed people that I could visit, anybody that would like to catch up or uh, hook up. Um, if you have a tractor or something that you want to show off, by all means, please get in touch because um, I will be trying to travel around a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's next week. So I'm heading on Wednesday, or myself and the family are heading on Wednesday, and we'll be back uh, late on Sunday night. So looking at the development then of the Doe Triple D. So during the 1950s, farmers in the, in the, in the UK were in need of high horsepower tractors. Um, they were looking to push on their production. And they had very, very few options in regards to this. When you look at the tractors that were available in the 1950s, you know, your Fordsons and, you know, your Ferguson 35s and you had smaller tractors, um, they were looking to push on, they were looking to get bigger tractors, but there was nothing really available. So an Essex farmer called George Pryor developed an ingenious solution to the problem by creating his own tractor. So he did this by purchasing two Fordson tractors, removing the front wheels, the front axles, and linking the two of them together uh, by means of a turntable which provided the steering action powered by hydraulic rams. This left him with a double-engined four-wheel drive tractor capable of producing more power and outperforming any of the conventional tractors on the UK market at the time. So local Fords and dealers Ernest Doe and Sons um, obviously had a look at, at what was going on and what, what the development was and they took a, a keen interest in it and they decided to you know build an improved version and this is one this one was completed in 1958 it was called the doe dual power and it was later changed to the doe dual drive and abbreviated obviously as what we know now as the triple d doe dual drive so the first uh triple d used two forts and major uh 
tractor units producing 100 horsepower. The later Triple D, the 130, used two Ford 5000 tractors, uh, increasing the power output to 130 horsepower. And the Triple D 150 was based on the Ford Force 5000 tractors, producing 150 horsepower. So the vast majority of Triple Ds were sold uh, to the UK market, but a number of them were exported to the United States and to elsewhere. And while it was a very unique design, you know, it did have a couple of disadvantages. So the main disadvantage with the Triple D was the, the lack of suitable implement at the time uh, for what the, the traction and the power of this tractor had. And this meant that Ernest Owen Sons also had to develop their own range of implements to sell with the tractors. So other dis disadvantages stem from the use of two engines. This made controlling the tractor more difficult because the need for two gearboxes. Uh, so you had two engines, two gearboxes to maintain and to repair. Um, you know, profitability and breakdowns and profitability and you know breakdowns increased. And then you had the the job of trying to mate the two engine RPMs, the two gearbox two gearbox ranges together. Um, that when you were shifting into one gear, you know, both units were shifting together. So there was a lot, you know, there was a lot going on. There was a lot of mechanics involved in it um, at the time, which, you know, it did let, lead to some difficulties. So development really of the Doe Triple D didn't, didn't really last that long. And by the end of the 1960s, several companies had been developing, you know, single engine tractors capable of producing over 100 horsepower. And of course, in four wheel drive. Um, this competition, the need uh, for Doe to develop and test and improve safety rollover cab, of course, um, put the Doe out of production um, after only 300 had been built. The Triple D often makes appearances at our cultural fairs, such as the Airport Festival at Plough um, in Airport in Lincolnshire and Lisieux, Minnesota Pioneer Power Days, where it was, you know, always a crowd favourite, popular due to its very unorthodox build. The Triple Ds are worth a great deal of money today and are relative rarity. Even unrestored does can demand extremely high prices at auction. And when you look at, you know, the scarcity of them, those 300 built and, you know, I don't know how many of them, if there's half of them still out there, they're prob you're probably doing well. So if you have one, um, you've got something very special on your hands. And indeed, if you do have one or if you've driven one, uh, please get in contact, um, send me some information, drop something into the comments if you've seen one, if you've driven one, if you've worked on one. Um, it'd be nice to hear hear someone someone's thoughts on them. So that's really it for the tractor. Look, at, um, it's a short video. I'm just going to talk briefly about Ernest Doe themselves that, you know, obviously uh, built the tractors. So Ernest Doe, for anyone that doesn't know, they started out as a lot of companies did uh, back in the time in 1898 as a blacksmith. So very much a family firm, the company can trace its histories back to June 1898 when Ernest Doe himself took the lease on a blacksmith shop in uh, Ulting near Maldron in, yeah, Mal sorry, Maldon in Essex. Work in those days consisted mainly of shoeing horses and of course repairing agricultural uh, equipment. Very like what John Deere was doing at the time when he started up. So in 1910, uh, business obviously started to prosper, the business prospered, and by 1910, Ernest O had not only bought the freehold for the blacksmiths, but also the neighbouring farm. By this time, Ernest had uh, three sons, so he had Ernest Charles, Hugh, and Hubert. In 1920, uh, there was a tractor business investment, so after the war, so that would have been World War I, um, in 1920, Ernest Charles persuaded his father to buy some 6,000 tractors which had been sent from the United States. Uh, so it would have been sent during the war effort to, to, to help with obviously growing crops and whatever uh, to keep, thing, keep things rolling. And this was the start of the Ernest Doe tractor business. During the 1930s, the firm uh, began selling case tractors and also ransoms implements. During the Second World War, every possible acre was put to the plough and Ernest Doe and Sons did its part in supplying the tractors to do it in Essex from Fordson, David Brown, Alice Chalmers and Case amongst others. In 1943, so they opened up their first company branches. In 1943, the first branches of the company were established. The first at Fifefield near Ongar and the second at Hythill, Hill, Gloucestershire. Uh, by 1947, a further four branches had opened up. So into the 1950s then, uh, Ford and the Doe Triple D. So during the 1950s, the company was selling the products of several tractor manufacturers, 
But in 1957, a decision was made uh, to hold a sole franchise, and that was the Ford brand. In the 1950s, as we had spoke about, local farmers had been crying out for more powerful tractors to work the heavy land. And in 1959, the company launched its own tractor, the Doe Dual Drive, known affectionately, as we said, the Doe Triple D. The tractor was a coming together of two Fords and Super Major tractor units, minus the front wheels and the axles, of course, with a turntable slung between them. This created the four-wheel drive articulated tractor, which at 100 horsepower was twice as powerful as most tractors on the market at the time. In 1950s, so diversifying into construction, the company diversified into selling and maintaining construction equipment in the 1950s and began distributing the JCB excavator uh, in the south of England in 1959, later becoming distributor for Ford Industrial Range in 1965. So from the 1950s onwards, so development of the Ford dealership in 1950s, 60s, 70s period saw further development and the company under Ernest Charles and Alan Ernest, the company uh, signed an agreement to become a Ford tractor main dealer in 1956, as we said. So moving on to today, so anyone in the UK that's in farming would be well familiar with Ernest Doe & Sons. So they have 19 locations now, I believe, uh, from their website. Um, the network of branches has expanded to 19. 14 of these branches are in East Anglia and five of them are situated south of the River Thames in Surrey, East Sussex, West Sussex and Kent. Still very much a family firm. The chairman is Colin Ernest Doe and Colin's son Angus Ernest is the managing director. So obviously a fantastic uh, UK company um, that have been busy supplying farm machinery and farm machinery equipment for years and I believe today they have uh, Case and New Holland dealerships as far as I'm aware. Case New Holland, yeah, I'm sure they have plenty of other things that they sell implements and stuff and I think they do landscape and equipment and clothes and all that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, a fantastic company. So that's it, that's just look at the quick background. It's a very short video. It's all I really, really have time for this week. I've got so much going on and we've been very, very busy at home, obviously on our own farm. We're in the process of converting uh, one of our barns into a workshop and there's a lot of working on that as well. The Massey Ferguson 165, a couple of people have been asking me about it. Yes, the Massey is sitting there. It's getting ready to have its cab put back on. Sorry, the cab to get painted and put back on. We are just waiting for the weather to come right. It has been so wet and so damp. We just said, look at it, we would wait. We'll get it sprayed as soon as it dries up, um, which will be in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> it'll be sprayed and it'll be on in a couple of days. We'll get the canvas on and we will have another video, the final video of the 165 um, coming up in the next couple of months. So that is, that's it. I'm off to um, bed now because it is quite late. <laughs> it's Saturday night. And yeah, my dog has a, he has the right idea. He's heading off to bed there now. He's um, obviously feeling quite tired. But uh, being a golden retriever, anyone that has a golden retriever will know that you can't just let a golden retriever go to bed without having to clean up after it because they do shed quite a bit. So yeah, that's it. Clean up after him, clean up after myself and get to bed. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see everybody in the next video next week. Thanks for watching.